everybody, Mark Greenwald here with the photography tip of the day, so to speak. Um, I wanted to share with you a little process that I've been going through here um, to scan some slides, uh, slide film that I have. I got into photography way back in uh, the late 90s, early 2000s, and um, at that time digital cameras weren't really a thing, so I uh, did a lot of my shooting on what's called slide film. Um, and this was, these were color slides. I think I used Velvia uh, from Fuji was one of the main things I used, which is a really rich and saturated film. Um, so I got a lot of pictures here that have just been sitting on the shelf for 20 years, 20 plus years. And uh, I finally wanted to get around to uh, digitizing those. Um, you can send them off to a photo lab to have them scanned. And what they do is a drum scan, which is, uh, I got to see one of them in action. It was, the thing that rotates, they, they take the slide out of the, the plastic casing here, put it on a drone, and it ro rotates around and they scan it that way. Um, to do all of these would be cost prohibitive. So what I did instead was um, I went and bought a lens for my Canon camera. Uh, I got a Canon uh, 5D Mark III here. But the lens that I went and bought was um, a Tamron, which was cheaper than getting a bunch of scans, uh, ironically. Um, but this is a, uh, a macro lens. Uh, it's a 90 millimeter f2.8 macro, and it's one to one. What that means is I'm able to get really close to the slide um, and get a lot of uh, detail and have the, the slide basically take up the whole sensor so I can get the highest resolution possible. So that's the reason I went and bought this. Um, the, the setup I hear that I made um, consisted of basically putting the light uh, slides on a light table. I had tested it with a, like an iPad at one point and um, it, was, it, it worked, but you actually saw all the pixels of the iPad. So um, I found these light fixtures that are about four, four inch by four inch. Uh, a couple companies make them. Contec is the one I think this one is. Philips makes it, uh, I think Juno, so there's several different brands that you can get. Um, and I think they're on the order of 50 bucks or something like that. You can actually use it for a light fixture in, a, in your ceiling or whatever, but um, for this I just flipped it upside down and then used it as a light table. Now the first couple slides that I did, I actually laid it right onto the surface and found that um, even though the slide was pretty clean, I was getting dust and scratches and just the texture of the lens itself of the fixture. So the solution for me was to elevate the slide off of the light table so that I had a little bit of an air gap there of about an inch and a half or so. And the reason for doing that was the depth of field is so tight with this, um, uh, with this lens that any of the dust and scratches down there would be blurred and out of focus, whereas it would concentrate on the lens itself. Um, to do that, ironically, I just took a, um, a CD case uh, a CD stack uh, for CDs that I wasn't using anymore um, and then cut, cut a hole in that and made a cardboard uh, slide holder. I'll zoom into this so that you can see it. But uh, I set it up so that I just had a way to lay the slide in and have it line up each time that I, that I was ready to take a picture. Let's talk about the settings that I ended up with. Obviously your settings may vary depending on your light source and, and how close you are and everything. but. Um, a couple of things that I wanted to do was, even though the, the lens has an f2.8 that lets a lot of light in, I wanted to have a little bit of forgiveness of the whole slide being um, in, in focus. I did set this up so that I, I leveled it out, so I made sure that my camera was level and the slide was level, so I was sh you know, shooting at 90, you know, right at 90 degrees to the, to the slide. Um, if your slide is at, at some angle, one side could be more in focus than the other. So to keep the whole thing in focus, you want to make sure that the, everything is level. Um, like I said, for forgiveness, instead of using 2.8, I, I used um, F, uh, F8 for my aperture so that I had a little forgiveness there to make sure everything was, would be in, um, in focus. Um, uh, color temperature of the light fixture I found out was 2700. Uh, but instead of using auto, uh, as far as my color temperature, I actually set it to, to, that, uh, to that light level so that all the slides would be consistent. And then uh, next setting was um, my ISO. 
Um, obviously, you usually want the highest or the lowest ice, so you can uh, 100 is, is usually the best. Um, I just found with my camera, I kind of like bumping it up just a little bit, so I think 320 is what I decided to use for this, uh, just so that it was uh, it had a little bit of um, not a little bit of grain. The grain you're going to pick up actually in the slide film because there this obviously slide film actually has the grain in it, so. Um, what 100 would have worked, and like I said, I was, I was just kind of testing around 320 is what I found that I like best. And um, the last thing was the time um, of the shutter opening. And the, the good news with that, it could be whatever it needed to be. Since the, I've got a fixed slide and the camera's fixed, um, I, I'm not going to get any blur from time or anything. So um, I did play around with a few different time settings to, to see what. Um, uh, what worked best as far as the general slides because some slides seemed like they were a little overexposed some are a little underexposed um, I will tell you one of the things I did to combat that was I set the camera up to have some um, auto bracketing um, where it would take three pictures and I set it to auto so that it would um, overexpose one underexpose and then it, I actually was using the HDR mode so that it actually made a um, uh, an HDR version of the best of, of uh, over and underexposed for all areas. Um, it only does a JPEG of that, um, so therefore you don't have the raw footage whenever you want to go to use that JPEG. Um, I was finding that I didn't really like the, what it did anyway. Uh, I did like the fact of shooting raw and having those three, like uh, one exposed the way I wanted it, one over and one under. Um, it's a lot. I have so many slides though that it was going to be such, uh, you know, I, I think such a waste of, of space because I was finding that where I had it dialed in was really better uh, exposure overall. Uh, the, the overexposed and the unexposed were just way too far on the outer ends. And I had it set for auto and then I tried uh, dialing back a little bit. But I think what I would, do, would suggest is don't waste the time doing that. But if you find one that you really like and it needs over or under compensated, I would shoot it again and, and um, just go through. And I, I shoot small uh, plus raw. Um, so I, I have, uh, I'm able to go through everything and, and look at it without getting into the raw uh, file. I don't use Lightroom, a lot of people do, and everybody says I should and probably will eventually. But for now, I like to have the JPEGs to just go through quickly to find out what I have. Um, one other thing I bought to make this a success um, like I said, I got everything fixed here, but I was always a little worried about like whenever you hit the button to have a little bit of shutter shake or um, the camera shake. So I bought what's uh, it's called a Pixel Pro TW283, I believe it is, yeah, 283. And this thing's been fantastic because what I can do is I'm holding this in one hand, I'm able to put the slide in, and then you can press this halfway so that it focuses. So each slide could be just a little bit different as you as you plop it in, but this focuses each one. I hit, and then I hit it uh, full on and, and it takes the picture. There you, you hear the beep for the, that says it's focused. Hit the button and there's your, there's your shot. Put your next one in. Oh, and they're so beautiful. You get to see what, uh, what you've taken and forgotten about over the last 20 years. And that's basically it. That's how I've been uh, shooting these and um, Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe and I'll do all that stuff everybody tells you to. It, it helps my um, stats if you, uh, if you watch this the whole way. Um, thanks for watching and I'll have more photo tips for you soon. Take care.